You are tuning in to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. All Here right. we are. Here's today's giveaway. By the way, we do these giveaways on a lot of these episodes. If you want to be able to get in when you can in order to win amazing prizes, today's prize is really fun, um, make sure you turn on your notifications and subscribe to the channel. As soon as we post the video, get in there, see what you got to do to win something. So here's what you got to do today. Comment underneath this video in the first 24 hours. Give us a nice comment. Uh, we'll pick the best one. If you win, this is what you're going to get. Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically modified probiotic drink designed for drinking alcohol. No joke. You take this. I open it, drink it. Then I go drink with the boys. And then guess what? I feel okay the next day. Hey, I'm not you making party? I am not making this up. It's This stuff is crazy. It works like magic. In fact, Adam, Justin, and myself, oh, and Doug, did a drinking game. You can find it somewhere on YouTube. Uh, and we went hard, and the next day we were okay. Yeah, we don't recommend that. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, you'll win this if we pick your comment, as long as it's in the first 24 hours. Also, before we get to this awesome podcast, uh, the Phase 2 Bundle. Uh, that I've been talking about. You have two days left. So it's 48 hours to take advantage of the phase two bundle. This is where we take MAPS performance. This is an athletic workout program, about three to four months long, and combine it with MAPS aesthetic, which is also three to four months long, and that's bodybuilder focused. Put them together. It's a it's the best of both worlds. Normally, both of them would cost you close to $300, but right now it's $79.99. Go check them out, mapsfebruary.com. Oh, and finally, if you want to learn more information from the brilliant minds here at Mind Pump, go to maps free, excuse me, mindpumpfree.com. Mindpumpfree.com. We've got a ton of guides on there. They're all free. Download them all. Learn some cool stuff about fitness. That's it. Enjoy the show. Brilliant. Justin. Yo. Uh, so uh, is wifey back from her oh, her yeah. week with the friends? Oh my god. No, no husbands. Yeah. Have a good time week. Just debauchery. Oh, is, is she is she back? I thought she wasn't coming back till today. Is she back already? She's back. Yeah. She oh. came back last night. Um and uh yeah, so she she definitely let her hair down a bit uh up there with with her girlfriends. So Did they party? Yeah, they, yeah, they partied. I guess one of her friends brought everybody like a case of champagne. And so she had like she had like four or five cases of champagne up there. Oh and my I'm god. like, "Oh my god, did you even make a dent in that?" And I guess they made a dent. Uh, and so I was like, I really hope that you guys used some of the Z-Biotics because we have like a whole case of those up there. Yeah. Uh, and the first night they didn't. And it was just like just slow going and dragging ass and all that. And so I actually, you know, she totally forgot about it. And then the next night, you know, they did it. Uh, it was like it was it was a game changer especially for her friends that had never even heard of it before i didn't even know that was an option it was just like that's happened to me twice now since we've been up there where we have it there and i forget to do it and i yeah, have just almost a, was like it, it yeah. is it's like the most crazy magic uh, whatever i've ever had it's yeah. weird in fact so remember when we did that test all the three of us mm -hmm. so maybe for, for you didn't know this uh, it was a while ago i don't know when it's did on, we do that it's, it on like, it's on instagram it is right it was no, like no. a year ago maybe oh yeah and we did a drinking test to to introduce this new partner, Zbiotics, right? So for people that know, it's a it's a genetically modified probiotic, but it's modified to uh, to help break down the, the like the negative shit that alcohol produces in your body that causes all those those effects of you know like headache and feeling like garbage and bad stomach and all that stuff, right? So so to, in, in order to launch this, we did this drinking game. <laughs> And we saw the rules of the it's drinking game. It's still on YouTube, right? It's got to be there. Yeah. And the rules were, we thought it would go too slow, which was a big mistake. We're like, let's make it a little faster yeah. and make it. We got to get to the point. We did a drinking game. This is not what a fitness podcast should do. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Shot after shot after shot after shot. Take another shot. You forgot to jump in. Oh, oh, no! 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 Bro, that was the most drunk I've been in at least over a decade. Do not do what we did. I don't think we anticipated getting that destroyed. That, that was way overboard. But here's the trippy part, and this is 100% true. I don't feel nauseous. I don't have a headache. I don't feel dehydrated at all. I feel totally fine. It's absolutely brilliant. It's so brilliant that I actually worry that it's going to increase people's uh, how much people drink. What's their What's their tag? Have you seen their tagline? It's uh, drink like there is a tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah, people like say, it. drink like there's no tomorrow. It's drink yeah. like there is a tomorrow. Dude. Why are, you, why are you telling that? It's an extra shot. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Sal is sexy. Woo! Woo! I'm doing this. 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 I'm
squats, dude. I need the squats. I can do better squats than Ansal drunk. If you, can you do this? Look. Can you do that? Yeah, I could, but I would look like you. No, no, try it. <laughs> Oh, I see. I see your oh, evolution. Oh, oh man! Oh, oh dude, you guys, he's the worst. That's not no, the whole dude, dude. Down. It's all sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best oh, day of my life. I, I've never been that drunk in my life. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's the next silly. day, I felt. I mean, tired, but I felt okay. I still didn't believe it, and, and I've tested it three or four times. And finally, I believe it because it's weird. You don't yeah. expect to feel okay after doing something like yeah, that. Yeah, we took it to its limits. You know? uh, I'm not going to do that again. I'll be honest. Hey, this. don't get in a fight outside or something. I will. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you should do that later. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a newborn. At yes. home. <laughs> As you get older, you learn to stop before you get to this point. Oh, there's his dicks. And you're worse. But uh, I definitely will do the Z Biotic whenever I go out. And if I remember it, I'm just like, I just got to keep them like, accessible in my car. Are, like well, at my house. Well, I have it in my hand. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this is it right here. It's a tiny little, that's it. You drink this and then you drink. It tastes now, like nothing too. Nothing. Too. Now yeah. here's the problem with it that I found. And I, we predict, all of us predicted this when we first were talking about this product. It, it For me, this is not, I'm not advising this. It encourages me to drink more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I know the next day I'm not going to feel as bad. Yeah. That's not yeah, good. The, the punishment a, isn't quite as severe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when she comes home and she tells you about all this, she tell you like details or is it like, oh, yeah, we had a good time? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like somewhat, uh, it's interesting to hear how they party. You know, it's different because it's like, it was like six like women that, uh, you know, a, a lot of them had been just like stuck, you know, at home with like taking care of, uh, you know, a, family members and like there's the, one of the one of the her best friends was like there like homeschooling and like going through the pains of that and like Courtney as well and it was like just this sort of release uh that they all shared together and so they I mean that, I think that's why they went a little ham uh you know with with the the <laughs> drinking but they all it was funny because like so they stayed there and then they're like you know baking and like you know all the like the shitty food makes its way in there and all that stuff <laughs> so yeah she she was like yeah I got I dabbled a little bit but uh um, yeah, they didn't really go anywhere per se. They just like were sitting there, just talking and having a good time. Uh, so, well, yeah. does, she, does she know we have the like the, the, the security camera? I know I would have messed with her. <laughs> about you that, oh, hey, Adam should've... didn't turn the cameras off, just so you know. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. How uh, many? How many? How many girls were up there? I think there was six. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. quite the party there. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw they a, lot, had a good time. I saw a lot of male delivery guys showing up. What, the, <laughs> what was that all about? Well, you know? The cops showed up a few times. Yeah. I was wondering. I saw what was cops, going on firefighters, there, yeah. male delivery guys showing up. I know. What the hell happened? Strange. You're. You're playing single dad today too, right? Don't you have your your wife took off over to uh, Las yeah, Vegas, right? Yeah, Jessica went to because her family, her mom saw the baby when he was first born, and that's it. And mm. so she now gets to see the baby, and her nana hasn't seen the baby, so she went over there. So it's just me and the older kids. But you know, the older kids are they're old, they're older. So w once your kids get to a certain age, they're easier um, in some ways and harder in other ways, right? They're easier because it's more hands off. You know, they can. If they want to make themselves lunch, they can. They do their homework, no big deal. Harder because you have less control over them, especially when they're teenagers. But it's not like I'm like, you know, when you have a, like a young kid, it's like you got to be there all the so it's not it's not like being a single dad. It's just easy. <laughs> Pick him up from school. Piece of cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do my thing. Well, that part of the out. drill. I mean, I imagine that part's kind of a headache though, right? Because you have to re probably your schedule has to revolve around theirs because they they need to be shuttled everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. How much longer until your boy gets his license? How old is he right now? He's fifteen, so he'll turn sixteen in uh, July. Oh wow! Yeah. So okay, what's the what are the per, what's the permit process now? It's I you know can get your license when you're 16, but you're not allowed to drive with anyone else in the car that is not, I believe, over 21 with a license. Okay, so now how do they? Okay, that so means you can't, he can't like drive around with friends. Okay, can't do that. there's no way that's going down in high school. Yeah, no way, bro. That's do, why do, nobody do, gets their license. That's one of the reasons. Yeah, because you're like you would. What's the use? Right, you yeah. would roll with your buddies for sure. Yeah, so I, I would feel like totally do that. So okay, is that is that what's happening? Is that kids are just like f it? I'm not going to get my license anyways until I turn 21 or whatever. Turn, I, I think it's when you're 18, 18. You can do it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's 18, not yeah. 21. No, no, no. He can't drive with anybody over 20. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's 18 or. 21. I think what the what I remember it is. If, or I recall it was, is that when you get you can get your license at 16, you can only have you can only drive nobody else nobody else in the mm -hmm. car any age. I think it's just you, right? No, I think somebody else, but they have to be older. They have oh, to be a certain they age. have to be over 21. Yes. Yeah. That's maybe what that's, I mean. Maybe that's what it is. And then when he's over 18, then anybody could be in the car. With How him. do you not even know these rules? You have a son that's 15. I don't know, bro. 
I mean, I, they, change, attention? they change them all the time. See, you know, one thing I do know is that these rules have reduced uh, fight fatalities. Oh, yeah. You can, well, okay. I, I generally, imagine. okay, yeah, but yeah, I gen attributes that to just less Something kids, ha yeah, just well, less kids having their license. Okay, they wait all, till they're like 20. Yes, I'm but, always nervous with the young kids on the road. Oh, bro, my God. Let's all be honest, though. Okay. Yeah, we no, all I, have to be very objective and honest here, okay? I know our kids are I was, listening to I was a terrible driver. Okay. 16. When yeah. I was 16, in the car, I, I thought I was good. Though. I drove like an yeah. asshole when I was by myself, but I drove like a way bigger asshole when my friends were in the car. Oh yeah. Like, think about the shit you did. Oh the, really? Did, did were you? Come on. Think I about mean, I drove like an asshole. I agree with that, but I th I think I was more risky by myself. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I wasn't. No, my really? friends. Dude, I was piling my friends in. You know, there's no seats for them. They're just like laying down in the back. Bro, you know, like I used to fishtail on purpose to make them hit the sides of the back <laughs> and, <laughs> of the car. And dude, I would go off road. I did not have an off road vehicle. Yeah. Uh, it was, I just did it. Oh, dude, I did this one. Fun. This is terrible. This is a horrible admission. This is so stupid. But I would. We would drive down. So when you go down towards Morgan Hill, there's these roads that there's not like street lights or whatever, right? These long roads. Yeah. And you drive, in, and just to scare the shit out of whoever. I in the did car, do that. Okay. I turned the lights off. Yeah, I do. And you that. can't see. You're driving in blackness. Yeah, why? And whoever the first person <laughs> to speak cause. up is yeah. the loser. Right. So you just <laughs> you don't know what's in front of you. You can fuck you know whatever. Oh, yeah. God. Idiots. Yeah, you have really dumb ideas. Yeah. So I, it, it works. I think it works, dude. Because you know, think about it. When you're in your, with your buddies, and your buddies like, oh, I dare you drive over the curb. Or, oh, oh my God, that's crazy. So you're more likely oh. to be an idiot. Yeah, now you're did, just it, racing. Is, each yeah, other. but has has overall fatalities and accidents gone down, or is it just in that age group because obviously that well, makes fatal sense. Well, fatalities overall have gone down because of the advances that they've made in car protection, mm -hmm. which is, that's actually a big one. Uh, cars are a lot safer now than they used to be. Right. Uh, but even when you control for that, I believe in the young age group, there's been a bigger drop because, and they think it's because of these laws. And you, you can compare, I don't think it's the same in every state, right? I think in some states they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So you can compare that or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they're saying that that made a big difference. Anyway, nonetheless, he has to do this like 30-hour online. It's so funny. He's still my son, right? He's got to do a 30-hour permit test. And uh, he's. I'm like, what are you going to do? Just leave it on and go do stuff, you know? Just uh, it's for thirty hours. He's like, no, you got to click on stuff while you're doing. It's like they've thought of everything. I have to be on the computer. <laughs> he's he's like, already tried to hack it. Yeah, yeah he tried, dude. Dad. He's like, yeah. I got to sit here for thirty hours to do this whole time. Like, I was gonna pay a kid just to push the button. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what I would have done. I would have been like, turn it on. I'll go watch TV. I'll I don't. Back do you guys remember the? Pro I, so if I I remember that we used to have to do like this. Um, I think six hours of with driver's ed. And then you, yeah, you got to do that too. And yeah. then you had a written test, and that was it. Yeah, you got to do was that it. You got to do the test. You got to take a class. Then you got to take a written test, Dude. get your permit. Then you got to do the driving uh, instruction. Yeah. Then you go take the test at the driver's. Driver's ed was hilarious. I remember being in that, like in the back, and I like one of my other friends were there, and it was just so boring. And you, you know, you're watching uh, uh, what's that one video? The uh, road. The, 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 Yo, red, the red red asphalt yes, yes. red oh asphalt the one, yes. the one that's been around since like only exciting thing. 1970 yeah, <laughs> that, that you could watch <laughs> but the, the whole time it's funny because like they have the same books that they've had like for decades and people like just make little drawings yeah. and shit in there and like so we're going through looking at everybody's drawings and like like crazy like stuff that they're saying in there and then we're adding to it dude, those dude, those I videos are designed to scare you scare the hell out of you the fuck out of you because yeah. they'll be like and you know this is what happens when someone doesn't wear a seatbelt do they still do that and there's I feel like the, the you know the fragility of these kids these days. I couldn't handle exactly it. what I was yeah. thinking because I remember watching. Did you guys watch these? They would show like the dude's head yeah. bashed open, brains, oh, brains splattered on on the, yeah. the road. Yeah. And like I was like, ah, oh, there's like, no way. What what are those class courses called when you get a when you get a ticket and you can get it expunged from your record by going to it? What's it called? Oh, uh, uh, traffic school. Traffic school. Yeah. Like, have you guys ever gone to traffic school? Oh, yeah. Have I gone uh, to traffic school? Times, do you guys? Okay, so then you man my first name basis. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So I do you remember? Your first experience of going to traffic school. So I remember mine, and and what I remember, I was so fucking mad. So I don't know if this hustle still happens. Back when I was a kid, and you get tickets, this was what they used to do. It's so, all online now. So, oh really? Yeah. Which so I you you had to go in person for eight hours, yep. and it was very competitive. There was tons of traffic schools, and they all had these things like. Comedy and traffic school. Yes. Pizza and yeah. traffic school. To compare yes. to compete. Yes. yes they to still compete. do that. So I was like, this is cool. I get to go. I did comedy, pizza, and comedy, traffic school. Pizza, traffic I was so excited school. to go. Like it was going to be like entertainment. So lame. So not. No. I, I remember somebody raised their hand about like 30 minutes in going like, wait a second. Where's the comedy? Where's the comedy and, and the pizza? pizza? And the guy's like, well, pizza comes at 12 and I'm the comedian. And it, it was so. The guy like, was, you suck. You know, the guy was dry <laughs> as fuck. It was all a gimmick just to get you to sign up. 
Yeah. Because they were competitive. There were so many of them. And he tells a joke with, with like as he's teaching the class, which is dry oh, as hell. Now, oh I don't know God. if this is a thing anymore, but did you guys figure that? Because I got so many tickets as a kid. I mean, I, I've told this before, but my, my car insurance, I couldn't get my car insured anymore. The only car I could get insured under was my dad's 1978 working van because in, car insurance companies were like, hell no, we're not insuring that kid. You've right. got a million tickets or whatever. Uh, so it was uh, it was really really bad, but uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, <laughs> you know, we talked about our ticket stories before because I I had I had four in a year, and when you get four, you get points. No, no, they they they, they suspend you for a year. Oh yeah. yeah, so you can only get you can get three. three. Yeah, yeah, three in a year. The fourth one you're suspended for a year after that, mm -hmm. and I got four within a year, wow. and so I went to fight it. It was my like only hope. And I showed up, and the cop didn't. Show That's up. what I, I was going to say. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That was a hack that I figured out. Where yeah, it was a fifty-fifty shot. They show up. Yes, so you should you, fight everyone. Yeah, you get yeah. a ticket, and yeah. you say, "Oh yes, I want to. I want to dispute it." You'd show up. Cop wouldn't show up, and they'd either have to take it away, or if the cop showed up, nine out of ten times they reduced the the, the cost. Oh, yeah. So it's a two hundred dollar ticket, especially if you had you a decent case, right? Mm -hmm. If you had somewhat of a case or whatever like that, they would reduce it. You know what? You yeah. know what tickets I had? I had three of them, and they got expensive. Carpool, you know, carpool, right? The minimum. Oh, that just went up oh, again. Geez. So what is it now? Five hundred. Four fifty. Yeah. Four, oh, yeah. Okay. So when I was driving, it was two hundred and sixty something dollars yeah. for one. Every time you had one, it would double. Yeah. So it'd go to five hundred, then uh. it would go up to a thousand or whatever. That was one that I got <laughs> quite a yeah, few Yeah, I fought one. I remember because when I went to Chicago, um, I still had my California plates. And so I was like just a target, you know, like they love everybody. Hate, yeah, everybody hates California. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like driving, uh, you know, in this uh, like southern part of Illinois. <clears throat> and I was I was passing this car. I was going like super slow. And like the it was, it was a broken up uh, line. And then it got to like double yellow, like right as I like pulled and this cop was coming the other way and saw and the the, the part where I was like, no, I got to fight this. Like he stops me. And I'm like, OK, yeah, you know, you got me, I guess, whatever. He was like, oh, yeah, and you're not wearing your seatbelt. And I was like, wearing my seatbelt. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not wearing my seatbelt? You weren't wearing your seatbelt. You just put it on. And he was like bullying me, saying that like I didn't have my seatbelt on, and I'm just like, no, dude, like I had my seatbelt on the whole time, and so I had to go to show up in court to like fight the charges. Thankfully, he didn't so show what up. makes what makes the cop be like that, right? So I I've always wondered this. what I, makes it. Well, no, here, here's it. So I've had some. I just, the last actually ticket that I got, which was a, a few years back, I want to say it's about four or so years. Of, oh no, maybe like three years ago. I got a. I, I should have got a speeding ticket. I was uh, driving uh, out uh, to see my buddy out in the country, um, up uh, like where I used to grow up, and we were moving. I was doing like ninety to hundred, just cu country road, nowhere. And sure shit, there was a CHP. Yeah. And he pulled me over, um, and I was like, "Oh man, yeah, totally got me type of deal." Mm -hmm. And this is a country road I've driven on forever, and we we're in a hurry to get back. Whatever, super cool guy gives me like a like I think like a driver's license ticket because he knew that I, I and I didn't have my driver's license on me, but I was polite to him, and that's all he gives me. He lets me go. Mm -hmm. Then you can get in another situation where a cop will like take you to the to the mile an hour over. If you are going twenty miles an hour over, yeah. you can it's speeding plus reckless like it's uh Re it's reckless like whatever driving. the mood there. Yeah, yeah, and they can yeah. tag how they write that ticket determines how big that fine is yep. going to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered, like, and I'm I'm consistent, like I'm always apologetic and I'm right. sorry, and I always try and come up with some fucking legitimate good excuse for why I'm driving I that. I got a poop, yeah, you know, whatever, <laughs> right? Like, there's I'm, bees in here, yeah. And <laughs> you just you never know what I you're gonna what time. you're gonna get. And so I'm always wondering. I, I want like one of my cop buddies to break it down to me, like what what makes you determine whether you're gonna give this guy a a slap on the wrist because you got to pull him I'm over, sure, and what makes you like? I'm sure your reaction, how you talk to them, matters. But I think what matters more is like what happened in the morning. You know what they're for dealing him. with. Their, yeah, like his or wife her. walked out on him. You know, you're about to get fucked if uh, you get yeah. pulled over. Yeah. I got pulled over. I did a burnout at a stoplight and I got pulled over by two <laughs> cops, two different cars. I was a kid. Dude. The dude pulled me out of the car, slammed me on the hood, yeah. put put my hands behind me, cuffed me, yeah. and my cousin tried to get out of the car. Fucking dude pulled his gun out on him and get in the fucking car. What? Yeah, dude. And I was like, uh -huh. Are I you thought serious? I had to have to be in Milwaukee. Now, now here's what I'm they're, thinking. They're, they're I'm thinking there. in my head that they see a car with four kids and you know, it was me and my girlfriend, my cousin, his girlfriend. I bet you they're like, oh, let's have, let's fuck with these kids. Let's teach these kids. So I feel like that's what it was. <laughs> totally. Why is he slamming me on the hood on the of the car? You know, kicking my legs apart, and then he's giving me a lecture. I felt yeah. like he was trying to like scare me straight or something. Uh huh. You know, because that's the only explanation. Dude, I have. How many times have you like? Peed 
peeled out of like turns yeah. and things when you were like younger. Dude, I used to do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did that. I did that, and an undercover got me. So it was uh, in front of me was this blue suburban, right? And uh, we're in a neighborhood. <laughs> he comes out of the stop sign, so he's now he takes off a stop sign. I get ready. I pop the clutch on my Integra and just whoa, roast him up, big old smoke cloud. He throws that, he reaches in and throws a freaking ah, siren on top of his hood, and what? then and then pulls me over, like all detectives. Yeah, street clothes. On, and I, I think as a kid back then, I'm like, I don't know what he can and can't do to me. Yeah. So he's scared the shit out of me. He's gonna haul me off, take yeah. me to jail. Did and you shit buy over that at some like convenience store? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Just put it up there, and fuck with you. Probably. Either. Well, that's what we think of that when Sal said that they were probably just messing with him. Well, this guy probably wasn't even a cop. He just fucking yeah. <laughs> dude. So <laughs> that'd be the ultimate. I, we, so I used to. It's probably a dad who lives in the neighborhood. Yeah, He's pissed off. Bro. Fuck this little kid. I'm gonna buy one on eBay. Bro, but dude. back before cell phones were a thing, right? You used to be able to buy like these these like gaff like gifts or whatever. And there was this this light that you push and it would make the siren sound and it'd go red and blue light, right? Uh-huh. So <laughs> so I bought this and I was, <laughs> oh, I was waiting dude. I was waiting for my cousin to do some crazy. <laughs> he used to always do that, right? He'd always burn out or do something stupid. Yeah. So he did that and he just had some weed so he's already paranoid, oh, right? So he does perfect. that. So I'm in the back seat and I hit it. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> this, shit is, this shit is bad. Oh, oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> Dude, they're not gonna get me. Bro, he like slams on. Bro, the he could and because he couldn't see where the car was because it was yeah. no car. Oh, yeah. it was the best five minutes of my life <laughs> yeah. just to do that. Wow, yeah, that was, <laughs> those yeah. were the days. You I know. know, you know. I but feel like yeah, there's not a lot of that these days. That's like, probably yeah, a good we, thing. Yeah, dude. We were reckless. Yeah, it's. I, it was after I had my son, my my oldest, that it switched totally. Switched all of a sudden, I, I was know. totally aware of driving like a jerk. Now I'm at the age now where I'm the guy who sees it in everyone else. Like uh-huh. I see a kid do that, and like oh. Yeah. That kid. I hope mine lasted a little longer. I was all the way through college. I was like, you know, kind of an asshole. Oh, yeah. God, you yeah. know, I, just, I mine was when I got a lifted truck. So when I got a lifted truck, I realized how fucking reckless and fast I was going in the car. The car doesn't feel fast. I drive that thing around 100, 150 miles an hour all the time, yeah. all oh, over yeah. the place. Then I get this big old lifted truck. You drive 80 miles an hour in a truck like that, and it feels like you're going 80 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. And I remember going like, oh my God, this is kind of scary to drive this fast. <laughs> it slowed me way down and made me realize God, I am driving that reckless, going that fast in that car. Have so, you guys ever had a scare? Like, so, like one time, I was with my cousin, and we were racing our cars together on the freeway, and it was always we were just we're so competitive that basically it would always turn into a game of chicken. It right. wasn't even who has a faster car; it was who's more willing to risk their life, right? Because at some point. We're, all, we're going 140 miles an hour, and the guy who takes off the brake first ends up being a loser. So this is just, it got dangerous, and we would do this. And then our turn came up, and I was in front of him, and I'm get, we're pulling, so I'm slowing down to get on the turn. Well, he wants to get in front of me, so he doesn't hit the brakes yet. He goes around to try and pass me. Me, being competitive, stayed in my lane, didn't let him come into my lane. Well, he fucking swerved, and I see him go off the road, and oh, I see dirt and mud no. fly everywhere, and I swear to God, I thought he died, right? Yeah. So I pulled over, and I'm like, just, I'm, I'm like shaking or whatever, and I run over there, and luckily, he was fine. The car spin. He's standing outside of his car, and then we hug each other, you know, and then after <laughs> we hugged each other, we let go, and then we start laughing. Now, do you, do you think that we're all just young and dumb, or do you think that we're naturally wired this way? Like the it's we have cars now, but go way back. Was it you would take risk when you were out hunting? Probably when you were a teenage boy, <laughs> taking horse. the chariots out. I'm serious <laughs> though. I'm serious. Like I, it's not. Th- this is a common theme with young teenage boys. It's not like we're. It's you know none of us grew up in the same town. We all have these crazy stories that we're sharing, and we talk like this. I know plenty of kids that we're, we're more the same. drawn to risk. 100. percent Well, that's what I mean. Do you think that? It. Do you think that we're wired that yes. way? And it just seems crazy because this machinery now that we can drive 120 miles an hour, but it didn't matter. Even if there wasn't cars, we'd find other ways to risk our lives 100%. at that age. Hundred percent. I don't think that's ever going to stop. Okay, if you. So then the question is, and the, and this, I'm reading the the coddling American mind. They talk about this, like you know, part of what's going on in our society is the result of the the helicopter parent yeah. being so protective of their kids. Does that go through your head as fathers? Like, okay, I know I did way riskier, scary shit than this. Like for example, I mean, just yesterday. Max is outside. Okay, we have this backyard that's literally a big sandbox. There's nothing in it. There's not a f- sharp thing. There's nothing he could climb on. There's and I walked in the house to like blow my nose and she's like, "You can't see Max." I'm like, "So?" Yeah. I'm like, "He's mm-hmm. fine." I'm literally going to walk right back out. And she's like, "Yeah, but you can't see him." I'm like, 
So he's gonna yes. dr- he's gonna drown in the sand. Yeah, exactly. Ah! I'm like, I'm you like, walk oh. out there, he's upside down. He's gonna he's gonna be, he's gonna he's gonna be fine for 45 seconds. That I walk in the house and come back. You know, totally. like. But we've I don't know. We've become so overprotective like that. Do you think we're doing more harm than good? When that's, we ha- that's a good it's, question. It's a hard question, right? Yeah, I, I I remember like I went through that too. Like even having the kids now, they can ride their bikes, you know, themselves and like go a little further and go out and explore. And I'm like, how far do I want to let them explore? And then I'm just like, you know what, I have have to let them do it and it like eats at me a little bit because i know there's blind turns and there's like cars on the road and there's all these like factors that like you know scare the fuck out of me dude it's uh okay so if, if you this is easy anything that is that you think is stupid like that people do right when you see it on youtube and you think that's idiot what a, that's a stupid thing to do 99 percent of the time it's a man or it's a guy we're, we're wired to take more risk now what's the value of that in in society innovation well, well risk yeah risk taking leads to innovation it leads to discoveries it also leads to more deaths it also leads to more drug abuse alcoholism and other crazy stupid stuff so it's definitely part of uh, of 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 male dna in general but of course on when you go down to the individual it can vary uh, dramatically but again look at all the craziest sports right mm-hmm. you're going to see that the craziest things the craziest risks gambling the craziest risks with business the craziest risks with well, look at substances like working at like an oil rig yeah. or something you know it's, it's just, like the, the, there's there's needs for that kind well, of behavior this is also why i think something goes viral like eating tide pods <laughs> because you have parents that are probably like okay kid can't go take his bike too far kid can't go across the street to the park yeah, what am i going to do right so they can't do do anything outside we're, we're protecting them so much they live in this bubble so they find something in their house so let's fucking eat tide pods put tide pods in our mouth and see how dangerous that is it is weird like we're so we're, we're such animals sometimes right such like rebel. think about yeah. like think about the stupid risks that you would take as a kid and just the exhilaration mm-hmm. it's like it's exciting i mm-hmm. just did this thing even if you got hurt like, there were risks that i took that didn't necessarily pay off but it was still like, oh, that was great. You know, right, right, I was, right, I was yeah. exhilarated. Right, right. So I think knowing that, you're a little. This is why I remember I had that conversation about raising boys and girls, and we're like, oh, you know, it'd be hard or whatever. You know, guy, with boys, you got to be careful if they have that that strong risk taking gene. Oh boy, man. Oh, you know, yeah. it's more. They're more likely to do this stupid. It's funny. I talked about like I said last time that you know they're more likely to jump off the roof into a pole. I got like ten DMs from guys. Oh, dude, I did that. Oh, yeah. so I jumped I, off the roof. Oh, and yeah, I so did, did I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing backflips off that, and we're at somebody <laughs> like else's a rite of passage. We did know? that at. We did that at. How stupid is this? Right. This is in high school. My ex girlfriend at the time had uh, flown to Michigan for a week and a half. She asked me to come there and check on the dogs and feed the dogs while they were gone. And we, I threw a massive party, <laughs> and we're doing flips off the fucking house of into the pool. Did. Yeah, yeah, bro, like, how could you be any stupider than that? But I, again, I feel, I feel like we, yeah. it's like wired in us mm. to do things like that. What's the biggest risk like category that you would take uh, when you were younger? Like, was there a cat? Like, was it with stuff with your car? Was it with your body? Was mm. it, you know, do you, is there something that you were? I would say both. Like, so I, yeah. I did all the s- stories we we're talking about right now with driving and there's so many more i'm not going to waste everybody's time listening to all the dumb stories i did is uh, driving around in the fog and shit like that but it i also that's what i was drawn to snowboarding and wakeboarding like it was I like mean, a control yeah risk. i would go, i would go hit a jump that is just way beyond my skill level and figure it out in the yeah. air you know and crash hard. i mean i just you took risks like that at that age where now i'm just totally opposite. Well, i mean yeah we would and that's why i was drawn to these full contact sports and things like it's just like it, we would test our, our our toughness you know it's like how tough are you what can what can you handle and it was just always this this pecking oh. order thing and it's like you know who's the biggest guy you know what you know line me up and then we would have drills where we would just hit the shit out of each Let's other see what just happens to see what happens oh dude I, I i got a pair of boxing gloves when i was uh, 15 so what did my, me and my buddy do let's see who can literally this is what we did Let's see you can take the hardest punch. It wasn't let's box and defend yeah. ourselves. Well, you gotta, it was you go first, yeah. and let me you see if I first. can take it. You have to think that this is how they used to do it back, like to decide who was going to lead this tribe. Right. We'd have to fight it out or figure it out who's going to be the leader. You'd have all these these men who think they're going to dominate this tribe and run and be the head of it. 
There's only one way to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We got to battle. We got to figure out who's time. Yeah, words are cheap. That's just changed now. There's other ways that we can measure. Like they didn't have wakeboarding and snowboarding and fast cars to drive 120 miles an hour. So they probably just wrestled on the ground and, and fought each other. <laughs> they were other. like, let's go see who can get that gazelle from that lion right there because we yeah. need to eat right now. Really, though? Who wants to do that? Totally. Justin. Oh, you're the leader. Yeah. Go get the. Go get the <laughs> if you survive, you'll be the leader. Say no more. <laughs> yeah. If you do that. No, that's all, that's all funny. I, see, I took a lot of risks with supplements. I would study supplements. Supplements, especially when I got into stimulants, mm. and then it was just a fucking chemistry fun for yeah, me. Yeah. See what happened. I'm telling you, too. more than a couple times, I would lay in bed, uh, like thinking, praying, like, okay, like, help me get through this heart pounding moment because I want, don't want my mom finding me here with a heart attack. There has to be some good though to this, right? There has to be some. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. There has to be some positive to that because well, it make okay. Well, we're all entrepreneurs. What's, what exactly? Oh. I was just gonna say, yeah. what is scarier, driving in the fog, 120 miles an hour, racing your buddy, or starting a new business? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. The worst thing that happens when you start a new business is it fails, it doesn't work, you got to start over, and you work really hard. Like yeah. that's like yeah, you're driving the fog, you die. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. I think that if you if I don't know if you if you do things like that. Then other things in life, I think, just seem so you know small in comparison. Yeah, I think entrepreneurs yeah. probably, I would guess, I don't know what the statistics are, but I would guess they're more, they lean more towards that risk taking uh, kind of behavior. For sure, dude. Um, yeah, and it's, I mean, you're, 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 you know, what are the what are the quotes around entrepreneurship? Like an entrepreneur is somebody who's willing to work eighty hours a week to avoid working forty hours a week. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like half the time. People don't know this. Entrepreneurship in particular has been glorified in recent uh, years because of uh, you know, technology and media. So lots of people are starting their own businesses. But usually what it looks like is this. You're an entrepreneur and you make shit for five years and you work a lot of hours for five years and you make a lot of mistakes for five years. 80% fail. Yeah. 80% fail. Yeah. yeah you no, know, yeah. I, I think that it's been over glorified in the last decade. I feel like oh, there's yeah. a lot of people that have no business doing it, man. I think it's a lot of people if you that- you got nothing going on, you can always label yourself an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, the fallback. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's I, like I, only, I, only fans. Yeah. Huh? I sell herb, her, her, herbal I'm an online entrepreneur. Yeah, I yeah. do online. I do a multi level marketing. It means I, I'm unemployed. Yeah, yeah, you ever get those messages from when an old friend in high school? Hey, Adam, how you doing? Man, I haven't talked to you for a long time. Yeah. By the way, I'm having this party. We're going to talk about this opportunity yeah. right away. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. God. Drink this little uh, thing of juice. Yeah, our herbal life. Yeah. This is, this is going to be an herbal life. <laughs> Speaking of supplements, Adam, you seem very zippy today. Yeah, did no. You, did you, what did you do? Well, I did the, so this morning I did our, pre, I did our pre workout. Well, here's uh, one, I have a, a nice, you know, drive to get here this morning. And so I get a chance to like really wake up. I got to, uh, stimulate my brain by listening to an audio book. Then I get here, I have our pre-workout. And then before we podcasted today, I did. I hadn't had the Pure in a while. And so I did the Organifi Pure with a theanine. And I feel- Isn't that nice? It is nice. Oh, it's yeah. a great uh, combination with caffeine because it's yeah. non-stimulant. I love yeah. it, like you said, after the caffeine dose. Like it's perfect to kind of keep it going. Yeah, yes, because yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want to throw any more caffeine on top no, of that. Otherwise, get, I'll be stimulated all, all night. Mm -hmm. And then I'm almost jittery and I don't feel as sharp on the podcast where- if I back mm -hmm. off the caffeine, do something like pure and theanine in there, it mellows me out, but then still keeps me mentally. Yeah, sharp. too much stimulation is not a good thing. It doesn't increase performance. It actually, in fact, tomorrow I'm going to be reading. I'm doing the audio version of the book that you know that that I, oh, I put yeah. together and wrote. And Sal's own sexy voice. Yeah, it's going to be great. But uh, actually, it's I'm actually not looking forward to it. I've never read out loud that long. I don't know if I'm going to stumble over my. Way. So I was thinking about this. What can I take and do? Mm -hmm. We should bring myself? a bunch of kids in here to just like sit and be like, you know, like you're reading them a story. No, then I'll start doing like story voices, <laughs> you know, yeah. and resistance yeah. training. Is the great thing. <laughs> but anyway, it's uh, so I'm like, do I do more stimulants? Do I, and I, I realize that the probably the best thing to do is to take things to balance me out because if I'm overstimulated, yeah. it's going to be fast talking, jumbled words, right. and I'll miss things. Uh, so I'm going to do the pure also uh, with all that. I imagine tonight, too, you'll probably put a lot of effort into making sure you get a really good night's rest. You don't probably overstimulate tonight. Yeah, really. but I don't want to overthink it. Here's what happens to me. When yeah. I start to overthink uh, stuff, yeah. then I'm too uh, yeah, As natural as possible. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. You know, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. Anyway, I read an article on uh, fitness trends for 2021. Predictions. Did we, were we getting right? For phys so, so we talked about this a while ago. So well, here's a th so here's yes. First of all, we got a lot of things right with our predictions, but I'm going to pull it up because uh, very. This is what's interesting about it. So there were nine fitness trends for 2021. Out of the nine, one. Let me see. I'm going to count them all. Two, three. I believe seven. If I'm not mistaken, we nailed. Se no, seven out of the nine are all related to working out at home. 
Mm, of course. And, and so and so I mean, basically. Oh, well, I was going to say, that's not a very good yeah, prediction. Yeah. That's too easy. Well, let me go over what, what some of them are. So like one of them is like, you know, uh, home, you know, workout equipment. So a big one was like uh, home gyms. So here, here's one poll that said that 75% of people now want to work out at 75. home. 75. So yeah. that's gone up. Yeah. 75. That was, it, I remember it was 50-50. Then I remember it was like 60-40. Now mm-hmm. 75%. Yeah. And the money people invested Dude, in- Dude, PRX work- has to be- oh. expo- Did you see they sent an email out? They were talking about their they have to increase rates because of the overwhelming amount of people that are trying to buy equipment and they're trying to Demand service- huge right And now. get it to people as fast as possible, which means they got to hire and bring more people on. It's not going to go down. Here's my advice to you. If you're thinking about getting home gym equipment- yeah. Do it, get now it now because it's going to continue to get more expensive uh, before it flattens out for sure. Um, and I'm, that's what I'm reading here. There's uh, apps for minimal minimal equipment exercise exploding. So apps that, that tell you how to work out without much equipment. I just room. noticed on my Apple TV, I never noticed before, the, uh, you know, on your, you have the uh, iWatch mm-hmm. or whatever, right? You know, the little health a symbol yeah. thing, like it looks like a rainbow circle or whatever. Yeah, yeah you close your circles. That's now on Apple TV. Mm-hmm. And so now, and I'm sure they probably are really? having all kinds of exercise videos and stuff on there that you Apple's can Apple's going to keep going with that stuff, with the tracking and the metrics. Like, the, they're going to go crazy. Watch it all happen, and it's going to be on your TV. In real time, you're going to have, like, all this data, like, being shown. It's going to be cool. So I'd love to bring this up with you guys and see what your guys' thoughts are. I know I have my opinion, but with this explosion of people more interested in working out at home, explos- explosion of home workout equipment, apps that teach you how to work out on your own, solo fitness treadmills, all the stuff that you do at home and the interest going up. Do you think this is going to increase people's consistency with workouts, increase the amount of people that are working out? Or do you think because less people are going to gyms, it's going to decrease or do you think it's not going to have any effect at all? I what think it's going to decrease. Been? You think it'll go down? I think because what it's doing is it's it's an, an easier uh, entry level, right? Yeah. It's sim- easier access. They are making it. I mean, look how it was so simple that if I was somebody – Last night, I'm clicking on Apple TV. There's that. I could have just, I could be a total couch potato and I go, oh, what's this? Click on that. Oh, this is interesting. Let me try it. So I think you're going to get more, and you have things like But is that any different than signing up for a gym membership of that course you never is. go to? No, no, no. Yes, it is different. Why it's so different is, and this is why I think we're going to see a decrease in people seeing results and we're going to see an increase of more people falling off and less results is because more people are going to get involved or try things, mm-hmm. which is only going to keep that percentage of the majority that fail. Well, going to the gym, okay, it used to be part of my presentation. Someone would come there and I'd say, you did the hardest part. Yeah, You got here yeah, today. But you're just you got you're your just, car you're just, and you got here. You're just yeah. trying to sell them. Remember, well, yeah, but friend. still. It just, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. Bro, We I, I knew that line too. Right, right. But I mean, to drive to the gym and get there, you've 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 already had that conversation and battle back and forth. Oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. They got there, you right? You solidified your decision. Okay. Yeah, clicking on an yeah. app and downloading it, like, and by the way, which on Apple is so easy, you just double click your face and now you bought it for five ninety nine. Sure. It's so easy that we're going to see, I think, a flux right. of people come in, but results. Well, I just yeah. know human behavior. Behavior, right, you get the treadmill, and then it ends up being like uh, you know the place you rack all your clothes on, uh, and, and you just see that all the time with home-driven uh, type fitness uh, stuff. But like honestly, I don't know. Like I, it, it to me, it maybe initially it's like that, but I, I do see like the convenience of it. Like if people are really concerned about their health now because of this crisis, uh, you know, it could uh, I, increase. I think it's going to increase. I think I I, I I disagree with you, Adam, uh, completely. I think people working. In my experience, the most consistent non-fitness fanatic people. So I, I got to take, I got to you know, carve off all the fitness fanatics because they're consistent no matter what. You give them a gym, don't give them a gym, whatever. You know, guys like us, they're going to work out. Which, by the way, is most people listening to this podcast. Right okay, now, but right? if, ab- you ta- if you take the if you take the time to listen to us talk for an hour and a half about fitness type bullshit, oh. you are not. Yeah, in you this guys category. are already doing good. Yeah, but yeah. If, but the average person um, who needs to exercise, in my experience, people who make a routine working at home are more consistent than people who make a routine going to the gym. The statistics on gyms are terrible. Terrible. The average gym, the average person signs up. Oh, I so pays disag- forever. I so disagree with. Oh this. no, no. I think people I, having equipment at home and learning the responsibility and uh, on their own. It's simple. It's basic. It's easy. Mm. It's right there. You're basing I think that. It's increase you're it. basing that off of you being a fitness fanatic yourself no. and having clients that are paying for personal training that are coming in. The average person. Okay, let me tell you. What it looks like is they have a room and it has every 
tool that's out, the Norda track, the ab crunch thing, the thigh master, the, and they got all these things that they got sold on emotionally at one point in their life that they're like, Oh my God, I feel terrible about myself. I need to buy this thing for 29 dollars That's going to make my thighs look amazing. Mm-hmm. They dry it for one week and then it sits there like anything else. I think that's just getting, it's expanding. There's more tools. It's getting more affordable. It's becoming easier and easier to access on your phone. So you're going to see a flood of more people, which is good for us, right? Cause that gives us more opportunity to educate and help these people. So I'm not complaining about that, but the reality is I think it will dr- drive results down because you'll have a flood of new people and the percentages are just, yeah, yeah. it's all, it's all dependent on the program that they're, they're being uh, drawn to like yes. how, how easy it is uh, for them to, uh, you know, really start making that something that they can repeatedly do. Uh, so, you know, if this could tap into that whole planet fitness kind of market where uh, they, uh, the biggest drawback for them going to the gym was the judgment. And they really nailed that with, mm-hmm. with, with that environment. But if you can, if you can provide them with something that's like easy and like, uh, you know, is really intuitive uh, at their house, I feel like that could really. Well, yeah, off. I think I agree. Okay. So Adam, yes, they're going to pe- be people like that. Okay. We're just talking about like percentage wise. I com- look at, here's the deal. Is it easier? How many obstacles are there to go to the gym? Oh, I got to drive to the gym. got to show up. Got to see other people. Got to bring my gym back. I'm in the place where the other place. What about at home? At home, I'm at home. I can just work out. Here's the other thing. The reminder to work out when your equipment is at home is there. The reminder when you're, you're paying yes. your, yeah, your gonna, $15 gonna a month fee. I agree with this all day, dude. It's, it's, okay, it's easier to not do it because it's there and to put it off because it's only 30 seconds to walk out in your garage and do it. If you made the commitment to get in your car and drive the gym, you're working out. That's one of the things I loved about having a gym membership was that I knew if I could motivate myself to get to the gym, I was not going to turn back around and come back. Where? When it's in the garage, okay? Like my rower is right now collecting dust. When it's in the garage and I'm going to walk down and I'm a fitness guy, okay? I have I have this tool that I use like crazy when I first got it. Yeah, but rowing's boring. I know. I know, but <laughs> hey, working out, lifting weights is boring for a majority. Yeah. We happen to love it and find a passion around it. I think what you're going to see is more people in the the market, which is all good for us, and I think that's a positive thing. But initially, I think we're going to see a decrease. Now, I'm hopeful, like Justin, like I am hopeful that these tools are going to help you, but here's the thing I I think back to. Look at my fitness pal and Fat Secret. Are people eating better? Yeah. And we have tools today that make it so so easy to track your food and figure out where you should or shouldn't be, and I don't think that... It's almost like yeah, you you bypass that you don't have to learn any of it. Yeah, you and just I, can do and it. And I'm yes. going to counter yes. that. No, I'm going to counter that because, uh, first of all, it's, learning how to eat right is way more than just knowing calories and macros. However, are people more aware of calories and macros today yeah. than they were when we were train, early trainers? I believe so. Mm-hmm. Now, as a percentage, you might be right. Maybe it stays flat. Who knows? But it, a lot of it's a numbers game. Let's say... Let's just say for argument's sake that because people are doing stuff at home, the, the enter into the market is much easier, so you get way more people involved. Right. Does that mean that the number of people that are consistent will go up? No. I think so. Oh, the total number? Yeah. Oh, duh. I mean, if all of a sudden you have a million new people flood in and 80% of them fail, that 20% will still, still bigger. Bo- will still boost the number. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm not debating that. Okay. That's obvious. All right. So I, th- I think- I wouldn't think that we're going to increase by- let's just, And we're just using you know fake numbers here. Right? A million pe- new people come into all these apps and tools. I don't think that the total number of success is going to go down- of course, it'll go up. It's the percentage that will go down. Well, I, I, I would like to look at because uh, it, it makes a big difference what they're getting and what they're like. If they buy like a you know a thigh master, I'm sure that the the success rate is crap, right? <laughs> if they buy a PRX rack that thighs. folds into the wall with barbell and weights, I bet their success rate goes way up. Well, I de- okay. So I mean, these are all different arguments and things that we can tease out, right? If you compared a person who bought um, PRX versus somebody who bought a thigh master, a hundred percent, the person that already understands that barbell weight training right. is superior and you should be doing that is probably going to see better results. That's yeah. uh, that's a no brainer. And and there, it's been there's been an explosion in these tech based home gym equipment things like Mirror and or Tonal, Tonal or yeah. Peloton. Right now, those way more success than your normal. I'm going to buy a stationary bike or treadmill. Why? I tune in and believe me, I have family members that did not exercise. They would exercise a month here, a month off, whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're consistent. Why? They turn on their Peloton. They're in a class. Oh, so and so's telling me what it's to do. It's a lot of fun. Intuitive. So it's, I, you know what though? It's way more I don't, successful. I don't know though. Let's give that some time. 
Yeah. Let's give it some time. There was a don't, there don't was a there off. was a time when those recumbent bikes were brand new into people's houses and it was cool and it was like it was neat to have so one. So you think the novelty will wear off? Yes. Yeah. I think the novelty of that will wear off because Peloton is cool. And I got all kinds of friends that are doing it right now, and I'm watching mm-hmm. all of them. My cousin's got one, my two best friends have got them. You're, you're waiting for them to fall off. Ex- <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not rooting for them to fall off, but the reality is that it is. It's novel, it's neat. Oh, I can connect with my friend and meet him in a class. Get back to me in, in about 15 months and yeah. tell me where that thing is I at. would like to, so I think the method makes a big difference. For example, we knew the numbers on success rate of members who worked with trainers versus members that didn't. Mm-hmm. Stark difference. Oh yeah. yeah. Huge difference. When you work with a trainer, your success rate quadruples and just, and even just consistency quadruples, right? So we have to imagine that the way people are doing at home fitness is going to matter. Do they buy weights? Does that make a difference over if they buy a treadmill? Is it interactive like Peloton or Mirror versus not being interactive and just being on your own? Is it just an app I do on my phone that, that caught it was free versus something I invested two thousand dollars in? Right. So this is all going to matter. So that, I can't th- wait to see all those. No, numbers. I agree. I, and yeah. that right, we agree on. And I am hopeful, like Justin. Like I, I do think that you know we will get better with these tools. There will be more interaction. You got to think that. You know, a, a million random people completely trying to work out by themselves, because to your your trainer point, is inferior to those same million people or half of those you know same people getting a coach who's right. like interacting virtually. Even though virtual coaching is nothing like in person and is nowhere as good, it's still better yeah. Yeah. than nothing. You know, so it'll help a massive amount. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I'm I don't want to sound like I'm negative or I think it's going to get worse or bad, but. I do think it. I think we'll see the percentage of success initially be low. I'm hopeful that we'll we'll innovate and we'll do things to make it better. But I don't know. I just yeah. think we have more cool shit that people can buy. Well, the biggest the <laughs> biggest thing is, uh, and this was brilliant. You know, back in the day, the reason why home gyms were hard to compete with the gym is because buying a home gym was a lot of money up front. You know, yeah. I'm going to spend. 1300 bucks or whatever to get this equipment. Whereas I could go to this gym. And it was very invasive too. Like yeah. You, you know, took up you a lot to, of space. Yeah. You had to designate like a massive part of your house for it. Yeah. So it, whereas I can go to the gym, pay 100 bucks, pay 20 bucks a month. Sounds easy. And I don't have to take up a lot of space. Well, now uh, like PRX offers monthly payments. Yeah. Like a lot of these companies offer payments where you're like paying a gym membership and they're designing them to take up minimal space. Right. This is a new frontier. I think that the fit, I think COVID and the lockdowns were really the impetus and they've caused a massive shift. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it'll ever be the way it was before. I don't think it'll be like it is now. I think Jim. Jim That's why I'm hopeful like too. To Adam's point, it's just I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more innovation driving because the market is so fresh and new and, and green. And, yeah. and I think that there's going to be a lot of businesses that see that opportunity to really improve the, the experience. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see. Yeah. Our first caller is Seth from North Carolina. Hey, Seth, how can we help you? Hey guys, what's up? Um, I have been weight training for about two years now, and I've, I've definitely uh, put on a good foundational physique and uh, built a quite a bit of muscle in that time. Uh, but in the past like six months or so, I've started rock climbing a whole lot. Um, and what I'm trying to figure out is how I can supplement the rock climbing to continue like pushing my performance to the next level with like strength and physique. But also, like a lot of the guys in my gym are very, very skinny, um, and I am I am not that. I'm a little more on the the broad shoulder, stocky side. Uh, and I didn't know if you guys had trained rock climbers before. If you knew sort of some things that could help, like supplement that training. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So I've trained uh, I trained two rock climbers in the past. Now here's the deal with strength, right? So you can we can categorize strength a few different ways. One way is to, to categorize it as absolute strength, meaning the total amount of weight that you can lift. Like I can squat 300 pounds, and then you know if I train real hard and I can squat 400 pounds, my absolute strength has improved. Then there's relative strength, and, it's, and, and relative strength is much more applicable to rock climbing. And this is the strength that you have in relation to your body weight, okay? Mm-hmm. So let's just say for, for argument's sake, you were able to maintain your current level of strength. You didn't go down at all but you lost 30 pounds on the scale, you'd be much stronger, relatively speaking, to your body weight, and that would make you a much better rock climber. So this is why when you look at uh, really, really good rock climbers, they tend to be kind of skinny, super lean, wiry, lean-looking people. It's because they're strong, but they're also very light. They have a lot of relative strength. Then, of course, there's the obvious stuff, which is a lot of grip strength, 
You also want you want to have really really good shoulder, hip, and ankle mobility. Um, your shoulder mobility is obvious. Obviously, you're reaching above your head and you have to hang and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You also want to have really good hip and ankle mobility because the feet and the and the, you know when you're kicking your leg up, you want to get up to a really really high you know foothold or whatever. Really good mobility is going to help. So what does this mean for your workouts? Well, it means being big and muscular is going to be a, a disadvantage. Uh, you want to be limber, strong, and light. And so that's the way you're going to want to, you know, uh, model your training. Seth, do you have uh, MAPS OCR? Uh, I do not. Okay, so I think, Doug, you're going to have to hook him up with that because I think this is what's this is the perfect program for what you're trying to accomplish. And okay. where and OCR obviously is is geared towards obstacle course racing, but it's a lot of the attributes that you want as a rock climber are going to fit perfectly in there. And the only thing I would tell you is, uh, if you don't care about the running, because there's a little bit, there's quite a bit of running that's inside that program, I would just supplement that out for my rock climbing. Yeah, and do your do that. Okay. I said, and those that program should be perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on grip strength in there and hand strength, which is like unlike the other programs specifically. But you know, one other uh, case that I was going to present that uh, was more around like Prime Prime Pro uh, driven, just because of what Sal mentioned in terms of you know mobility. But like if you've ever done any kind of kin stretch where you've put heavy emphasis on isometric tension uh, in these positions where uh, you, you know it's going to be more advantageous to you. To to be able to connect even further down from your fingers to your toes and have uh, be able to you know stretch that capacity how much force you can generate in positions and uh you know some, yeah. some of those moves in, in prime pro are, are fantastic for that so that's something that i would consider as well yeah and, and seth i have another question for you uh what is more important to you is it uh to look muscular and aesthetic uh you know kind of like more like a physique competitor would look you can go or, ahead and say me you're gonna say me yeah. right i can see you <laughs> right right <laughs> kind of like you side eye yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah. or okay. are or is it more important to you that you do really well at rock climbing um i would say that it's it's more important to me that i like maintain a just a nice physique it doesn't have to be like big and muscular like um muscular like physique competitor wise so i i'd say the performance and getting better at rock climbing is more important Okay, so if, if rock climbing is more important to you, um, then I would definitely focus on less on building mass, especially in the lower body, and more on building that kind of relative strength and strength uh, endurance. For the lower body, I tell you what, your split stance and single leg exercises are your best friend. Mm -hmm. So I, I gotcha. mean, we talk about barbell squats all the time and how awesome they are, uh, but this is a case where I could easily make a case that you know single leg step ups and lunges and single leg deadlifts are probably going to be more, you're going to get more carry over to rock climbing than you would with a, a barbell squat. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right, man. There thank you, you, Seth. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. That's a, that's a hard, uh, trade off for people sometimes, right? It's like they want to look a particular way, but yeah. then their sport requires them to look a different way. So it's like, what do I do? Yeah, well, there's a point where it kind of inhibits like what you're trying to do with your sport. So you have to kind of balance that and see, you know, what is the priority there? Well, yes. and if you're doing running, rock climbing, you're doing a lot of cardiovascular things, it's inevitable that you're probably going to lose some weight and lean out, which a lot of times you'll lose a little bit of strength. I mean, we were just talking about this morning off air. Um, I was saying how I needed to lean out the last week and a half or so I've dropped about five pounds. Of course, a lot of that's water weight, but I dropped five, six pounds and went, came back to incline dumbbell press today. And I struggled with the weight that I moved relatively easy just a week and a half ago. And it, I, what you have to understand is you can't freak out. You can't go like, Oh my God, I'm getting weaker mm -hmm. week over week. It's I'm leaning out. And to back to your point, Sal, like it's all relative to my body weight. So technically I'm as strong or stronger because I'm a smaller person this week than I was the yeah. week before. I ran into this when I was uh, grappling a lot, when I did judo or jujitsu, it's like, uh, I'm going to get big and strong in the gym. And then I move up in a weight class. Now I'm with, <laughs> now I'm yeah. against guys that are, yeah. you know, bigger and stronger and many of them bigger and stronger and easy in that weight class. Whereas I'd have to push my body yeah, they've weight. lived in that weight exactly so and this is how it is for a lot of different sports especially when now some sports relative uh, strength is is important but not as important as overall strength i mean if you're a lineman uh and you're playing football your body weight is also important you're a big strong dude mm. uh you don't want to be a smaller relatively strong dude you want to yeah. be a big absolute strong guy right. when you're on the line so it depends a lot on on what you want to do our next caller is alexis from new jersey Hey, Alexis, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, so I've been noticing that 
whenever I try to do an overhead press, I struggle with that initial liftoff, like the front rack position. And I was wondering if you guys have any tips for that. Yeah, good question. Super common, by the way, Alexis. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's the hardest part of the lift uh, for most people. Um, so don't, there's nothing weird or wrong uh, with you know how you're doing it or whatever. Anytime you have a sticking point in a lift, uh, one of the things you could do is literally focus on that part of the lift. So with a overhead press with a barbell, one thing you can do um, is literally take the bar off the rack in the front rack position, press it up, bring it back down, rack it, wait five seconds, then do the same thing. And the reason why you wait is because this gets rid of that uh, that that buildup of uh, what's it called elastic strength that you build up when you lower a weight and then press it back up. So what you're doing is you're constantly working on that dead stop position of the press. You have to go lighter when you do this, but if you practice this often, you should get better at that that particular part mm. of the lift. What's the most difficult part? Like, as I know, uh, you know, wrist mobility is a limit limiting factor to that in the in the rack position itself. Um, uh, what would you say if you if you wanted to pinpoint sort of like where it's uh, a struggle for you? I would say just mentally, like connecting to the fact that okay, I'm getting ready to push this up now. Like once mm. the weight is moving up in the air and I'm ready to lock out, like that's fine. But just like the initial part, like connecting to whatever muscles to get the weight up. Oh, okay. I see. Um, have you ever worked with kettlebells at all? I was just going to go that direction. Yeah. I'm glad you did. Not too frequently, but I do have some experience with them. Okay. There's there's a few things. And in, in I've, I've gotten the guys into this like overhead carries, but also just like in the rack position, doing some carries just so you, you, you familiarize your body with that position. Uh, and you know, the, the load itself, uh, being able to just, uh, you know, like have control over that and, and brace and be able to generate force in that position. Uh, it's a good way to start really kind of, uh, familiarizing your body with that. So, uh, the, the way it's loaded, it's on the back side of your arm. So, uh, it, it's really conducive to, uh, pressing and overhead and doing sort of spirals type of presses, uh, that will really help to, to get, uh, you know, that, uh, rotational support and, and uh, be able to stabilize the joint. And you'll find that you get stronger as a result of just, you know, working with a, a tool like the kettlebells itself. Alexis, how, how, how good are you about priming your shoulders before you go do your shoulder press? Um, I actually make it a priority for sure. Um, I forgot the name of it, but when you take like a, a, a stick or something and you kind of like rotate it Shoulder, around the back sh of you. Shoulder dislocates. Mm -hmm. So Yes, I do those. Is that is that the main thing that you do before you, you prime the shoulders to go in? Um, I kind of also do some like lateral raises with like two and a half pound plates. And I also have resistance bands. So I'll use like a light resistance band first and then go heavier and then eventually use a barbell. Do you, do you have access to a strap? I heard you're in a gym right now. Do you have access to a strap, like a like you know, TRX strap, suspension trainers? Uh, my gym doesn't have that, no. So you can use your bands. Use the really light band. And you know, do you know what a W looks like? For, if you can totally go on YouTube, I think we've done videos on this too, and look up suspension trainer Ws. And okay. you can do that same movement with a really light band. I like doing that before I do any shoulder stuff, just because that, that joint is a floating joint and getting all it primed the entire thing, doing just the shoulder dislocate. Sometimes people just get in the motion of going back and over and they're not really priming the, priming the shoulder really well. And doing a row to the W uh, really wakes up the entire shoulder. And then I would do a movement, like Justin said, like kettlebell presses and then with a little bit of weight and resistance, and then go into your your shoulder press with the barbell and see how you feel after that. Okay, sounds great. I'll definitely try that out. Yeah, yeah Alexis, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up what Justin said. I think carrying dumbbells or kettlebells in that bottom rack position and walking is gonna probably help you the most. I think holding and staying tense in that position. The key is not to rest the kettlebell or the dumbbell in that bottom position, but rather support it and stay tight and then walk for like 30, 40 steps. That tension, that isometric tension is going to build strength in that bottom position. I mean, when he said that a light bulb went yeah. off, I was like, oh yeah, that would make a huge difference. Yeah. And I, uh, I forgot this uh, one more point. Uh, if you're working your way back to the barbell itself, just to get uh, a nice tight 
grip with a fist grip uh, and have some outward tension. So you're actually kind of pulling on the bar outwardly. Uh, it creates that uh, the body responds to it, that the joint is more stabilized. And so uh, you're able to generate a bit more force. So just being able to pull out and create tension before you lift, uh, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable pressing it overhead from there. The other thing I would add to that is uh, making sure that right before you press, you think about squeezing your glutes and your abs tight so you have a good solid base. A lot of times people feel loose at the bottom because mm -hmm. their core is not tense before they press up. And that instability in the core, which is your base and foundation of a press like that, that's a lot of times the problem. So right before you press up, think about squeezing your glutes. Like if you're doing a hip thrust, squeeze your glutes and tighten your abs and then thrust or press up. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Thank you All for right. calling in, Alexis. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that, you know, the way the CNS works, is, you know, because the CNS, right, that's like the uh, the amplifier to the to the speakers, which are muscles, right? It, it's what turns on the muscles to make them fire. And the CNS fires more powerfully when more of it is turned on than mm -hmm. when less, less of it's turned on. So, in other words, if I do, if I want to get my right quadricep to fire as strongly as it can, I have to fire the whole body. Right. We actually do this naturally. When you're lifting something real heavy or doing something, even with one hand, that's real stressful, you'll naturally tense up your entire body. So, you know, when you're trying to go from a dead stop position, you can't go from dead. It's hard to go from dead stop to all of a sudden turn everything on. It's better yeah. to turn everything on then go. Yeah, I imagine like I, I know you guys have seen this in carnivals and whatnot, where it has that grip tester, where yes. you, you squeeze it and then you see the lights kind of go up. The harder you squeeze it, you got to think about that when, in terms, of if you're if you're not generating enough uh, force, if you're not lighting up enough muscle fibers to contribute to that lift, you know that could be uh, an issue. Well, I just think when you're talking about the shoulder, like the hips, it's a it's a ball and socket joint, and so you have all these muscles that are kind of supporting this this floating joint, and if they're not not all woken up and activated and stable you feel unstable at the bottom just like someone feels really unstable at the bottom of a squat if you don't mm -hmm. do a good job of waking up the hips just like if you don't do a good job of waking up all the muscles around the shoulder you feel really unstable when you go to a press just like when someone does a squat yeah and then you know of course if there's a part of a rep of an exercise that you're not comfortable with literally just training that part makes a huge difference huge difference you can literally stop your reps at that part hold the position, then do your lift. You could add more more weight at that bottom part or make that the determining factor to how much weight you put on the bar. Just train that part. I did this with bench press as a kid. I got the bottom part was so hard that what I started doing is I started doing, you know, I would do half reps bottom up just to practice that portion. And I got so good that that actually became a stronger part of my lift. Our next caller is Dan from Alberta, Canada. Hey, what's up, Dan? How can we help you? Hey guys. Um I'm going to ask you guys i've got a fitness test and about somewhere going to be between five to seven months and i've passed it before this will be my third time doing it and for it i've got to be strong and fast so i'm wondering what's the best way to balance strength and performance when training for competitions basically the results have to be competitive well more specific yeah what we, yeah what kind of competition are we doing it's a fitness test for firefighting so okay. uh, it's like a seven-part fitness test over three hours. Okay. Well, okay. So um, I'm not familiar with the tests that they might, that they do in Canada, but I'm somewhat familiar with the ones that they tend to do down here. So I'm assuming they're similar where you're going to be doing – you're going to have to climb over things, carry uh, a heavy bag for some distance, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Is that is that sound similar? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, It's a lot of sudden bursts of uh, – movement and then yeah some ladder climbs and like you said dragging heavy weights okay um what do you struggle with the most now is it the strength is it the stamina is it the speed it's definitely the the, the speed for myself um uh, i've got the endurance down pretty well and the strength as well but uh, i i can't do it fast it's gotcha my issue okay so here's the deal and you said you have three to five months so here's what i'm going to recommend for you um, anytime you're training for something specific, and let's say you're you're far out from that competition, like you are three to five months, this training you do now can be more general. The closer you get to your competition, the more specific your training should get. Okay, so in your case, what does that look like? 
if speed is the issue, I would do explosive style training now. So this is where you can do box jumps, uh, lateral jumps. You right. might do some snatches or cleans. When you get close to the competition, your best bet is to literally practice the things that they're testing you on. You want to practice those and get good at doing those because a lot of what you're doing is going to be based on skill. I mean, I'm a pretty strong guy, you know, Justin's strong and fast. But if you throw us in a test or, or a competition that we're not familiar with the skill, how are you not going to add me to that conversation? Well. I'm sorry. How are you not going to add me to that conversation? <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding. You know, he's I'm strong. Don't, Justin's strong. Yeah, do, Adam strong look, and fast. Adam looks strong and fast. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah. so yeah. what about what about Mav's performance? I mean, I would run performance totally. until probably the last four to six weeks, and then I would get very specific yeah. at what you're saying. Yeah, so, and it actually works perfect because you work on that explosive strength uh, initially. I mean, phase three itself is like completely uh, tailored towards what you're trying to achieve in terms of moving quickly and like getting that fast twitch response uh but then the last one is more geared towards endurance uh in phase four but yeah i would run that pretty much all the way up leading into your competition yeah just make sure you do the specific stuff uh you know at least three to four and weeks skills well that's what i would so if he, he do, knows, do that during your mobility session he knows the test so it, i would run a maps performance program through uh, leading up to the competition but then all i would do is i would pull out one or two exercises i feel are the least applicable to what i'm trying to do and add in things like drag bag drags or things or climbing over yeah. a wall specific in your training but as far as the programming is concerned that is that layout is pretty perfect for somebody like this yeah it, uh dan do you have access to maps performance I do, yes. I do have mass performance. Perfect. And, you know, just you know, more commentary on this. I think, uh, and I, I see this quite a bit, I fell prey to this myself uh, years ago, where people will train for a, sp a specific sport and they'll want to work out in the gym to train for the attributes that they need. So they'll think to themselves and say, I need strength, I need power, I need speed, so I'm going to do strength, power, and speed exercises in the gym. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but if you compare that person to somebody that just practices the sport a lot, oftentimes the person practicing just the sport a lot is actually going to perform better because the, the, the skill is so important. The technique is so important. So I can't stress that enough with you, especially the four or five weeks before your competition. E even if you just practiced you know, yeah. four days a week, just practice the test, you know, segments of the test and getting good at that. You're going to get so much carryover to the actual test. Well, that's key. I mean, like, like towards the end, like towards like a, a month, say leading into, you know, your competition, I would really hone in and focus on the skill of it. Uh, but d laying down the, the foundational, uh, movements and, and strength movements that you want to carry into the competition, like that's going to be the groundwork that you're going to build off of. And that's why I think the program itself kind of lays that out, but then sprinkle in, you know, the days in between where they're mobility focused you can work your skills within those days uh to keep them sharp but still build strength uh you, you know like in the beginning sweet yeah seems pretty straightforward when you guys put it like that all right awesome cool. thanks for calling dan. Thanks, dan thanks for the opportunity yeah that's a common uh challenge especially gym rats gym rats who love working out in the gym will and they're like oh i want to get good at this sport but then the sport is like, you know, 25% of the training that they do and they spend 75% doing stuff in the gym. Yeah. And then they wonder why their sport performance hasn't improved uh, as much as their gym performance has improved. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the other end of that, you also see people trying to emulate those movements in the gym, which I think is hilarious to me. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, which is a waste of time. So if you're going to be in the gym, the gym, the tools that are there are, are there best used for strength. And yes. So that's why we want to use that for strength. And then we want to use skill, uh, you know, adjacent to that. I feel like there's like a common theme in these questions right now. It's yeah. like everybody's asking these sport or competition type specific questions. Uh, training and it's like you need to just whatever that is whether it be rock climbing or whether it be for getting ready for a firefighter test you the stuff that you need to do for both those things is what you should be doing 80 percent of the time mm -hmm. and then the rest of the time that you're putting the work in to build strength leading up to all that yeah i i, I again i know i, I go uh, already referred to you know things i've learned when i did you know judo and jujitsu but i remember trying to build stamina and i was talking to a very high level competitor and he's like, well, you know, I'm like, man, I need to build more stamina. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing these like circuits in the gym with kettlebells, this and that. And he goes, why don't you just do more jujitsu? Yeah. I was like, oh, 
Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> a light bulb, obviously. And that's what I did. And I got way better, way faster. Well, it's like, totally. the, I think we've talked about this on the show before. There's there's some carryover to that, right? Doing those yes. circuits, you're going to build a little bit more of a gas tank. And it, sure, we can't help, but nothing will help more than just getting really good at rolling for longer. It's just like if you took somebody who is a badass swimmer and all of a sudden you had to compete against somebody who's a cyclist and they're always cycling all the time. Even if you're a good long distance swimmer, it, your chances of beating the guy who's always cycling all the time, even though both of them require cardiovascular endurance, they're different. Dude, if your, your skill is so important, it'll make you use less energy and exert yourself less because you're more technical. If, okay, if, if you've ever, <laughs> and I know you both have experiences. If you've ever gone to work with uh, people who are, you know, do hard, like physical labor, go work, go to a construction yard. Yeah, yeah, mix it, cement. Yeah, be a badass in the gym. You work out, you lift weight, a CrossFit champion or whatever. Go do roof, you know, put up, put roofs up for all day long with a bunch of dudes in the sun. And the dude with the pot belly who's eating the hot pocket for lunch yeah. is going to, he's going to bury he's you. He's going to crush you. He's going to crush you. So it's, there's so much uh, skill is so important with the, with the sport that you're involved in that getting better at the skills got way more pay, uh, payback than, you know, building general strength. Well, our next caller is Connie from North Carolina. Hey Connie, how can we help you? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Um, I was wondering if you had any advice for someone who frequently gets migraines or headaches um, from deadlifting and squatting. So um, I'm pretty new to weightlifting. I've been deadlifting and squatting pretty consistently the past six weeks. Um, I've seen pretty good gains. Um, so my squat's gone up about 80 pounds, uh, deadlift about 100 pounds, and I feel really good um, with the exception of these random headaches and migraines that I've been getting um, immediately after doing these two lifts. Um, I've also been experiencing some neck stiffness or soreness. Um, sometimes the left side of my neck will go numb like a few days after the workout. And I've rechecked my form over and over. I've even gotten a couple personal trainers from my gym to check my form. They actually said it looked pretty good. Um, I know that I have like mobility issues in my ankles and feet, but yeah, I don't know what that would have to do with my neck. So any suggestions on where to go from here? Cause I'm just really at a loss. Sal, doesn't Jessica battle with migraines? She does, but not not like this. Oh, okay. You know, it's it's interesting. Uh, Connie, by the way, I think you've won a couple shirts from us. I recognize your name. Is that is that true? I don't think that was me, but it might have been my sister. She's obsessed with you guys. Oh, okay. Um, bit trucker mm. lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. I recognize the, the last name. Um, okay, so interesting you're saying what you're saying, because I've actually had a few clients with exactly this same uh, issue, and it was really tough uh, for us to figure out what the problem was. But eventually we did come up with some stuff that started to help. So I, I got to ask you a few more questions before um, I can I can try helping you out here. Uh, number one, are you doing any caffeine before you work out? Not specifically. And in fact, so I'll usually go to the gym around 5, 5.30 um, before work. And I will have caffeine later in the day before I start my work day, but um, not before I go to the gym now. Okay. So, um, okay. So a couple of things you're gonna have to juggle here because you work out so late, this may impact sleep later. So you're gonna have to play with this, but caffeine before your workout actually could help. Mm -hmm. uh, could definitely help. Uh, caffeine has got a positive effect on headaches typically. In fact, it's one of the ingredients. It's in Excedrin. In Excedrin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Caffeine, uh, I believe with, uh, with aspirin. But what it what it does is it, it helps the blood vessels from expanding too much. What's happening with the deadlift and uh, the squat is you're, you're you're building a lot of pressure in your head, and then the pressure is immediately released when you drop the bar. And I think it's that switch uh, that's causing some of these problems. Caffeine can help, and so does uh, how you're doing your lift. Now, not necessarily your form, but rather when you're doing the lift. Usually, the way I recommend people squat and deadlift is they take a deep breath in, they hold their breath, which braces the core, they do the lift, then they take a breath in between reps. I'm going to tell you to not do that because I think that might be contributing okay. to your headache. Are you doing that, by the way? Which wouldn't, don't feel bad. That's how you're supposed to do it. But is that, are you doing that? Uh, I've never really done the cueing with the breath. Um, I'm, in fact, I might be holding my breath. I have no idea. Okay. I don't really pay attention to my breath. I'm more just trying to focus on the muscle that I'm trying to target. Gotcha. Okay, so when you're doing your lift, I want you to breathe out 
and try to maintain, uh, try to be relaxed in your head and neck as you breathe out. This may affect how much weight you can lift, but so what? It's probably a better trade-off uh, than having a migraine. So as you're doing the lift, I want you to breathe like this as you're doing uh, the lift to prevent that pressure uh, from building up uh, in your head and from causing that problem. And then the other thing is this, is uh, have you tried a uh, increasing your sodium intake mm, yeah. uh, before your workout? I have not. So and that's fact, the, I'm, I'm that, seeing a nutritionist right now who's like, back off the sodium. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. And in fact, did these headaches start when you started backing off on the sodium? Uh, it's hard to tell because I've started around the same time. So I started the workouts around the same time. Yeah. So, as a nutritionist. So I can, two things that I, I, I remember clients that, that had some similar and the two, th one was actually sodium and hydration, like drinking, yeah. drinking water, hydration. Yeah. Drinking water and then the sodium. And then the other one was, um, she had really locked up traps. And so she was getting like tension headaches. And then when she would load the bar on there and we would squat or overhead press, we would get these migraines that would flare up every once in a while. So what I'd have to do is before we'd ever go to exercise is kind of release all that with like a lacrosse ball mm -hmm. to kind of open her up and relax that before we go into doing any movements where those would fire like crazy. So those are the two in, 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 in my experience that I've dealt with that helps. So hydration, sodium, which uh, Sal already alluded to, and Justin. And then the other thing is, I don't know if you have really, really tight traps. Sometimes when you have really tight traps, you get those tension headaches, especially when you yeah. load a bar on your traps. I've also had clients that had really bad TMJ, uh, which also had contributed to uh, you know neck strain and lots of tightness uh, in that direction, which then inevitably led to headaches as well. Uh, but yeah, that's more, you know, tension related. So, uh, but definitely hydration is something to consider, uh, you know, as far as like what I've found with my clients that really, mm -hmm. if once they emphasize that a lot, uh, it did help. Now, Connie, I, I forgot to ask you why your nutritionist is having you reduce your sodium. Do you have uh, high blood pressure? No, I mean, I, I tried to get her to give me an answer because I did hear you guys say it was good, especially with weightlifting mm. um, to have higher sodium and uh, she just was like, "Yeah, don't do it." <laughs> do you do you have uh, do you eat a diet that's high in heavily processed foods, or is it pretty much whole whole foods? Uh, yeah, no, it's pretty whole food, pretty much whole foods. What a weird, um, rec what a weird recommendation. That's right? old. It's based yeah, off it's of old old, old science. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So so try this out. If your blood pressure is fine, if you're you don't have any contraindications, um, you're not eating a lot of heavily processed food. Try this. Okay. Try having. Um, now we work with Element, which is a you know uh, Rob Wolf's company makes electrolytes. It's a thousand milligrams of sodium. Tastes really good. Try drinking a packet of that about thirty minutes before you work out. Take a little bit of caffeine if you if you want. You could start with like 60, 70 milligrams, hundred milligrams, even fifty milligrams before you work out, and then try the breathing while you lift and see if that makes a difference. I have uh, I, I I bet it would make if it doesn't at least get if it doesn't at least help. It'll, it might even get rid of uh, the migraines that you're getting when you're doing the squats and the deadlifts. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I wanted to mention too, I do wear a mask at the gym because it's required. I don't know if that's necessarily it's not relevant. It's, it's not helping the cause. Yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> if you're doing high rep stuff, um, then yeah, I would say that it might be an issue. But if you're doing, you know, if you're, you know, 10, 12 reps, I don't think it's making uh, that big of a difference. It's not helping though, that's no. for sure. Okay, well, awesome. Yeah, I'll try some of these things. Um, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for this podcast. I had so many paradigm shattering moments and you guys are awesome. Um, so authentic and I really appreciate it. Um, your help navigating such a confusing, uh, world as health and fitness. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thanks, thank you for Connie. your support, Connie. Thank you. This is like one of those ones where, uh, obviously very tough to do via yeah. podcast without like, you know, cause here's a, it, it's it, a bit we, of trial and error. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we all threw a ton of things and yeah. uh, hopefully she actually, you know, if she listens to this, hopefully she teases some of those out and actually just applies one or two at a time and then sees what happens, applies the other one or two at a time to get to the bottom of it. Because if she throws out all the advice or throws all the <laughs> advice that we gave yeah. at one time, she might not know exactly what the problem is. Uh, but the, those are the two things that came to my mind right away is the, the hydration sodium thing. I've dealt with that. Mm -hmm. And then the really tight traps uh, before you go. Yeah. And do an you know, and, and again, without knowing more, it's hard, right? Because 
maybe the dietitian or the person working on nutrition yeah, what the found fuck? what well, was that there might be a reason right there might be it, well, she, yeah but she didn't say she knew she, she didn't she said it wasn't blood pressure i mean who knows it could be something with her kidneys it could be i know so i don't i, I want to make sure that yeah but the nutritionist isn't doing blood work i don't know i don't know if she's working with a, like a, in, in the hospital or, or what the deal is um i know. feel like if she was working with someone that was doing blood work they would have gave back it they would it yeah, diagnosed her or it something it could also just be based off of old crappy science yeah. you know where yeah. you're 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 that's my my feeling yeah it's just it's just like that's one of the things they do. Oh, yeah. drop your calories they just and drop try your and sodium. drop sodium. It just you know that's just one of those yeah. blanket things that they. Have. Yeah, but I mean, I had I had a client who felt exactly the same way. We do the deadlifts, and afterwards, it would just all of a sudden start throbbing in her head. Yeah, and I had her take uh, fifty milligrams of caffeine before the workout and, and do her breathing. Yeah, gone, completely yeah. gone. It made that big of a difference. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. You can come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us individually. On social media, on Instagram, you can come see what we look like and see what we like to talk about. Come find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can come find me at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Adaptogenic herbs are compounds that help the body deal with stress. Okay, think about it this way. Imagine if you have a, a bucket. And it's a like one-gallon bucket, and that's your stress bucket. So every stress that you have, you know, bad sleep, argument with the wife, I'm in traffic, you know, whatever – all the stress fills up that 